Good morning and welcome to Little by Little, a short time in God's Word. Turn with me once more to Acts chapter 16 as we pick it up with Paul and Silas in jail, starting in verse 25. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundation of the jail were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were loose. When the jailer woke up and saw the doors of the prison standing open, he drew his sword and was going to kill himself, since he thought, he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul called out in a loud voice, Don't harm yourself, because we're all here. The jailer called for light, rushed in, and fell down, trembling before Paul and Silas. He escorted them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. And they spoke the word of the Lord to him, along with everyone in his house. He took them the same hour of the night and washed their wounds. Right away, he and his family were baptized. He brought them into his house, sat a meal before them, and rejoiced because he had come to believe in God with his entire household. When daylight came, the chief magistrate sent the police to say, Release those men. The jailer reported these words to Paul. The magistrates have sent orders for you to be released, so come out now and go in peace. But Paul said to them, they beat us into the public without a trial, although we are Roman citizens, and threw us in jail. Now they're going to send us away secretly? Certainly not. On the contrary, let them come down themselves and escort us out. The police reported these words to the magistrates. They were afraid when they heard that Paul and Silas were Roman citizens. So they came to appease them, and escorting them from prison, they urged them to leave town, and after leaving the jail, they came to Lydia's house, where they saw and encouraged the brothers and sisters, and departed. So... The section of scripture here begins with Paul and Silas in jail, not moping, not crying, not pleading for their rights, praying and singing hymns to God. And it wasn't quiet. All the other prisoners are listening. I mean, you can't even imagine. It's hard to imagine yourself in jail. And then imagine it's such a place where they're going to need to bring light in there so they could see who's in, as we're going to see in a moment. Maybe that's where Paul gets what he writes in Philippians. I've learned to be content in whatever situation. Right? Hey, we're in the jail. We can't go anywhere. Our feet are in stocks. We've got chains on us. We're deep down in a dungeon type atmosphere. Hey, we still got each other. We still got the Lord. Let's pray. Let's sing to the Lord. And then there's this huge earthquake. And the, the jail is shaken, the chains are loosed, and the jailer, when he wakes up, realizes and thinks everyone's gone. He's about to kill himself. Like, well, that's a little drastic. Well, the penalty was death if you lost a prisoner as a jailer. So it's not without reason that he figured he would just kill himself. But Paul says, no, we're all here. We're all here. And somehow that turns into a witnessing opportunity because the man asks, what must I do to be saved? He must have heard them earlier. He must have seen something in them that was different. And so what do they say? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. And they spoke the word of the Lord to him. And everyone in his household got saved. They got baptized. And he demonstrated that new faith and that new belief as he washed their wounds and gave them food. Believe and you'll be saved. Seems simple. But it's not just for a moment. It's not just for a story. It's for a life change. New life to begin. Well, in the morning they are officially released, but Paul pulls out his Roman citizen card and said, ah, uh, no, we're not going to slink away in the dark. Uh, you're going to escort us out. You're going to give us a public apology. So... Interesting, right? He very rarely uh, worried about or talked about his rights, but here he kind of pulls his rights card. Hey, I'm a Roman citizen. You've treated us unlawfully, and we're not going to just slink away. And so after they get out and released, they make a stop at Lydia's house to encourage them and to give them further instructions, I'm sure, and then they leave. So what, what, what can we take from all of this? Don't get thrown in jail. No. Um, 
any time's a good time to praise the Lord. Right? Don't wait till you're in prison. Right? Start now. Living a life that proclaims and praises God in the good, the bad, and the ugly. And there are those around that God puts in our pathway that we're to minister to. Let's be praying for those opportunities. Praying for opportunities, not for our rights, but for the gospel to go forward from our lives. Till next time. I'm going to